teaching bodywork nearly 30 years ago, to have found yoga in a gym environment would have been unheard of. Yoga is now such a popular part of health club life that it's a natural progression for me to add my passion for yoga and my passion for sport to create this program. I've had the privilege of working with amateurs, enthusiasts and professionals with great success. This short program will enhance your training, add a new dimension mentally and physically to your work. Breathe deep, take the challenge and change your life. Breath. It's important that before your practice begins, you focus on the breath. Inhaling deeply into the belly and exhaling, pulling the belly back. Do this four, five, six times until you feel the body energized, your mind focused on the breath. Warm up. Standing at the front of your mat, toes together, heels together. Clasp the hands behind the back. Pulling index fingers down towards the floor. Pull the shoulder blades back, buttocks tight. Inhale as you reach back. And exhale as you begin to bend your knees. Tuck your head in and allow the arms to come over the back of the head. Now spend some time breathing into the back allowing the ribs to open. Inhale, reaching up and exhale. Now as you inhale, reach back. Release the hands, palms together and exhale. Pressing the hands deeply into the floor, pulling the head in towards the legs. Breathe into the spine, reach forward, deep breath, stretching the fingers, flexing the spine, bending your knees, hands down, keep the arms straight as you jump up, back or step back. As you lower, keep the belly up towards the back of the spine, don't drop the shoulders lower than the elbows and reach forward into Cobra, pulling the shoulders back. Tucking your toes under, reach back into dog pose, separating the feet six to eight inches apart. I'm going to breathe deeply into the spine, breathing into the back of the legs. Make sure the heels drop down. Bend the knees to step, jump or walk back towards the front of the mat, stretching out the chin, stretching the spine. As you exhale, press the hands into the floor, again pulling the head towards the legs. Inhaling, bending the knees into sitting pose. Knees together, toes together. Drop the spine, reach up, arch back. And exhale, hands down. Inhaling, reaching the arms up, stretch the spine open. And as you exhale, bring the hands down towards the mat, bringing them by the side of the feet as you press down reach out with the chin, bending the knees, stepping, jumping, here Neil steps back, pulls forward, as he reaches into Cobra, stretch, beginners may want to drop their knees here, and then stretch back into dog pose, feet apart, arms strong and straight, focus again in the spine, soften the neck, Soften the face. Coming up into the balls of the feet, step, jump, or walk back towards your hands, stretching the spine. Exhaling, head to knee. Inhale, bending your knees, palms up. Reach chest forward, chin first, palms together. Sitting position, knees pulled together. Holding this position, reach up. Stretch the arms, exhale, hands down by the side of the body. 
Inhaling, arms up, lift out of the hips and exhale, head to knee. Make sure the hands are resting by the side of the feet. Bend your knees if you have to. Inhaling, chin first, stretch the spine, feel the stretch of the back of the legs. Bending your knees, step, jump and lower into Chaturanga and push forward into Cobra, opening up the chest. Good. Tugging your toes under, reach back and again stretch back into dog pose. Pull the shoulder blades together, stretch the fingers, make sure the whole hand is applied to the floor. Breathe into the spine, coming up onto the balls of the feet, step, jump or walk. But make sure you don't make a noise. If you make a lot of noise, think again about stepping forward instead of jumping. Exhale, head to knee. Inhaling, bending the knees, toes together, heels together, knees together. Pull up, keep the shoulder blades pulled back, stretch out, making sure the fingers are strong, thumbs locked over the hands. And we're going to hold here, drop down two or three inches, holding, don't forget to breathe. Feel a burning sensation in the thighs. If you try to breathe through it, drop a little lower. Now release, stretching out of the hips. And exhale, hands down by the side of the body. Good. And to continue, inhale, sitting position. Hands together, reach back, open the spine. Exhale, head to knee, pull the head deep in towards the knees, good, reach forward, stretching again, bending the knees, step or jump, lower down into Chaturanga, reaching forward into Cobra, try to press down to lift the knees, good, tuck under and stretch back into dog pose, separating the feet. Breathing into the spine, releasing tension, opening up the back. Turn out, left foot, shoot through right. Making sure that the knee's pushed out over the little toe of that right leg. Inhaling, reaching up, palms together. Double check that your hips are reaching for the front of the room. Lift out of those hips, lift up the heel, turning the leg in, knee down towards the floor. Bend even deeper into that front leg. Reach out of the hips and arch back. Baby back bend, just the upper back bend, not the lower back bend. Make sure you breathe as you hold and sustain. Watch out that the weight isn't pushed into that back leg, but is in the front leg. Good, and breathe and focus. Now some of you may need to drop your knee at this point as John has at the front. That's fine. Taking your hands down to the left side of that right foot, begin to bring the head down towards the floor. If you're finding this difficult, move the hands forward until the elbows rest gently and easily on the floor. You may all drop the knee here and allow the hip to open. Stretching deeper and deeper into this posture, use the breath. Remind yourself constantly to release tension in the shoulders, release tension in the neck. Allow the lower back to move deeper and deeper into this stretch. Releasing hands on either side of the foot. Tuck your left toe under. Feet together and slowly lower into Chaturanga, keeping the belly up. Reach into Cobra, opening up the shoulders, using the buttocks. Tuck the toes under and exhale into dog pose, separating the feet. Breathe deeply into the spine, release tension. Just remember that the dog pose is one of the most important postures for releasing tension, opening up the shoulders, releasing stress and tension in the backs of the legs. Turning out, right foot, shoot through left, placing it nearer the left hand. Pushing the knee out over the little toe of that foot. Inhale, chest forward palms together. Separate the hands. Turn the back heel in, making sure the knee is facing now down towards the floor. Keep lunging forward. 
and hands down by the side of that left foot. Bending the elbows. Now move the elbows forward if you can't come down comfortably and easily. Some are more flexible than others. Breathe into this stretch. Lower the knee to the floor. Make sure the knee is open to the side and not beginning to tip you over to the right. Just keep releasing tension. Allow the lower back to sink deeper and deeper into this stretch. Breathing and releasing. Try to focus on the breath rather than the uncomfortability of this posture. Releasing the hands, one on each side of the foot. Spread the fingers. Tuck your toe under. Both feet together into press up position and lower down into Chaturanga. Keep those elbows tightly tucked in. Inhale, reach forward, stretching the spine, stretching the legs. Knees off the floor, advance people. Tuck your toes under and stretch back into dog. Try not to move your hands. Try to keep them where they are and push the heels gently down towards the floor. Bending those knees, stretch the spine, step, jump or walk back towards the front of the mat. Reach the face out, exhale, head to knee, press the hands down, bend your knees if you need to. Inhaling, chest forward, arms stretched, keep those knees firmly together. Reach up, lift out of the spine and exhale, hands down by the side of the body. At this point you may feel quite hot. Just towel yourselves off. Bringing the palms together. Inhale, reach down towards the feet. Stretch out the arms and lift. Pulling the buttocks in and arching the back. Exhaling, hands forward, hands down by the side of the feet. Holding onto the ankles, pull down into forward bend. Remind yourself to pull the elbows out to the side, locking the fingers around the back of the ankles, and breathe. Now because of your restricted position, breathe into the ribs, and pull the elbows out even deeper to the side for a deeper stretch. Placing the hands down by the side of the feet. Inhale, take your right leg back, drop the knee to the floor, and as you sit up, open up the back. Place the hands around the hips. Thumb towards the center of the spine. Fingers around the hips. Now use those thumbs to push forward. Thinking about the hips driving forward. Stretching into that front leg. But make sure the upper back stays pulled back. Shoulders open. Elbows pulled together. Head back but the neck not collapsed, keep it stretched out. Again, if your neck hurts, keep the head looking forward and make sure the knees over the toe of that front leg. Palms together, inhale and reach back, deep breath. Now beware here that you don't take the weight into your knee, the back knee. Make sure the weight is pushed into the front leg. Making sure that that right thigh is stretched, the hip opening. And again, it's an upper back bend. Don't compress the lower back by going too far or collapsing. Lift out of those hips and breathe. And again, those with neck problems, keep the head looking forward. Exhaling. Hands down by the side of the feet. Now walk your foot over towards the right hand, lowering the knee to the floor. And now just accordingly, some of us are going to be much more flexible than others. So make sure that your foot is sitting in such a way that you can sit on both hips. Don't collapse onto that left buttock. Make sure your weight is sitting between both hips. Thigh down, knee down, upper foot down. Placing the hands down by the side of the hips, stretch the arms and imagine that you're pushing yourself out of your hips, pull the belly up into the ribs, upper back arched, chin lifted, don't collapse the neck, reach up, palms together. For those feeling unable to do this, keep
keep the hands down by the side of the body. Breathing. Bring the head to look at the front of the room and take the head first down towards the floor. For those unable to do that, do what John's doing. Take the hands down. Stretch the fingers away, walking them away from you, releasing the spine into the stretch. Stretch the toes in one direction, fingers in the other. And then rest the forehead on the floor. Breathing calmly, releasing tension. Make sure you allow the heaviest part of the body around the hips to sink deeper and deeper. Try not to hold tension anywhere in the body. Every now and then take a deeper stretch and a deeper breath. And stretch out the spine. And obviously this is quite uncomfortable for some people. But try to let go. Palms together now to pull yourself back up or walk yourself back up into an upright position. Remember to bring the arms up before the head when you do that. Okay, bringing the hands down by the side of the hips. You're going to pull the right leg around to the front. Turning the knee out, place the right ankle at the very end of the left knee. For those unable to do that, place the foot over, bend the left leg and then walk up towards the heel to stretch the hip, the hip flexor again getting a deep stretch. Everybody else, make sure that you've got yourself positioned correctly. It takes a long time to get this right. If you pull the foot too close towards you, you don't actually isolate the hip flexor and you need to. So bring that foot right to the end if you're not quite sure you've done that right. Well done. And make sure the foot underneath is sitting underneath that right knee. Stretching out of the hips, take your weight forward and try to release. Now I know for a fact that your buttocks are going to be really tight while you're doing this one. So let go of that tension. Let everything release. And although it's uncomfortable, focus on the breath. But always to breathe out longer than you breathed in. Try to focus on the breath. Good. Now as you come out of this, palms together and sit up. And bring the hands down. And those of you in the adapted position, just take yourself into cross leg position. Okay, placing the hands down, you're going to step or jump back into plank position. And slowly lower down and inhale into cobra, deep breath. Lift the chest, lift up, stretching the arms, knees off the floor. Good, tuck your toes under and press back into dog. Now the dog here gives you a chance to release the blood will flow back through the legs, flow back into the belly, gives you a chance to stretch out the backs of the knees. You're going to bring that right leg back through your hands and stretching the spine open, breathing deeply. Palms together, reach forward and back into crescent moon. Again, watch out. Keep the hips facing forward, reaching forward, upper back, taking it hands down and your right foot walking towards your left hand. We're now working on the other side. Same thing, palms up above the head, take your face forward as you reach forward and place the hands down to rest. Stretching from the fingertips, right down. out 
the spine. Bring the palms together, we're going to sit up or using the hands to pull yourself to sitting position. Good, and releasing the hands down by the side of the body. This time lifting the left leg to pull it around, placing it in a cross leg position, making sure again that the ankle of that left foot is at the tip of the knee of the right leg. Make sure the knee just drops open and relaxes. Those doing the adaptive pose, same thing, but this time placing the foot on the floor. And as you walk back, place the foot down and push into the stretch, lifting the buttocks up and reaching towards the foot. Good. Now think about your chest pushing forward and you're going to get just as deep a stretch as those doing the opposite position. As long as you can feel it, then you know that you're doing the right thing. It needs to be deep in that hip, hip flexor. Watch out for the buttocks, don't tense them up. And breathe deeply. Those doing the advanced pose have got their arms up and reaching forward. Now immediately allow the hips to relax, immediately allow the buttocks to release. If you can't feel it in that hip flexor, double check that you've got your foot right on the end of your knee. Now your fingers again are sticky still, so make sure they walk away. And that you can allow the neck to release. It takes a lot of mental focus to keep calm when your body's hurting, but this is really the key here. Good, now as we come out of this, palms together, if you're lifting out of the advanced pose, or simply release the knees into cross leg position. Hands down, and step or jump back into plank position. Now this time you hold plank position. Keep the arms locked, keep the belly up, towards the back of the spine. Make sure that the face is soft, that you're not pulling tension into the shoulders, but pressing down rather than pulling back. For advanced students, the advanced plank. Try taking one hand off the floor. Make sure that your hips stay level, feet and toes together. And remember to try it on the other side as well. Now dropping down to the knees, push back and release and rest, rest the upper body, just push back into the heels. If you're uncomfortable like this, open the knees wider until you can sit back and relax. Forehead resting on the floor. Now again, you need to breathe into the spine because of the front of the body being pressed against the thighs. Coming up onto your knees, straighten the legs, toes tucked under. Drop the right knee to the floor directly underneath your hip. Adjust your right hand to be in line with that knee and make sure the hand's underneath your shoulder, directly underneath the shoulder. Squeezing the buttocks, open out to the left. Arms strong and straight. Now the hand is facing the same direction as yourself, thumb tucked in. Now as you turn the head, you should just see the thumb. Make sure the buttocks are still working and pressing forward. Pull the belly in towards the back of the spine and breathe. Now you're going to press the hand deeper into the floor. Pull the belly even deeper towards the back of the spine and lift the right knee off the floor, placing the foot in front of that left thigh. Now this takes a lot of inner core strength. So make sure that you have got the buttocks working, the belly working, and the upper body strong and straight. The neck's hurting, you can always turn your head down towards the floor. Placing the knee down, replace the other hand as well. Both feet together. Okay, now you can always do the advanced posture here where you take both legs around without dropping the knee. Again, it's worth trying both of these at any given time. 
and try to hold all of these extra postures for at least five breaths. Okay, other side, dropping the left knee to the floor, left hand in line with the knee. Using the buttocks, push forward with the hips to extend and open the chest. And again, make sure the hand is directly underneath the shoulder and it's always worth double checking before you start. So as long as you need getting these postures correct. Pressing down into the floor, pull the belly back and lift the left leg, placing the foot in front of the right leg. I keep very focused here, using the breath. Coming back into plank position, drop your knees. pull back and rest. Any pockets of rest that you get during the program, use them properly. Let go completely. Focus on the breath. Push any other thoughts away. Placing the hands down, bringing the knees together, we're going to go into crow. Now make sure that your hands are shoulder width apart and that your knees rest on the outside edge of your elbows. Remind yourself that it's about balance and focus, not about strength. Once you've found your balance, try to hold, maintaining mental focus and focus of breath. For those who can, you can step or jump back, lower down into Shadowranga and push forward into Cobra. It might be worth stopping the tape at this point and trying that again if you feel that you just didn't manage it the first time. Practice again and again. Reaching back into dog pose, stretch out the shoulders, stretch out the backs of the legs, soften the neck, soften the face and contact the breath. Drop down to the knees and we're going to go into spinal twist. Sitting down onto the left side, releasing the feet to the right. Lift the right leg, place it over the left. Make sure the foot is sitting on the floor. Lifting up the left hand, turn to face the right. Now push the arm in front of that left leg. Now you either press the hand towards the left knee, or for less advanced students, you can just press the elbow into the knee and keep the hand off. As long as you get a good deep stretch in the spine and make sure that you're rotating over that right shoulder. Breathe deeply. Try and stretch deeper each time, inhaling into the chest and exhaling to turn. Remember you're squeezing the internal organs here, stimulating the function of those organs.
rich oxygenated blood rushing through the body. And coming out of this, place the right arm in front of the right leg and stretch around to the left, releasing and stretching deeper. You can come right off of that right buttock, pushing more in around towards the left. Make sure the head turns as well, as the neck is part of the spine. For those more advanced students, you can release the hand and wrap it around your back. Inhale. And exhale. And release. Cross leg position. Hands forward, step or jump back into plank position. Lower down into Chaturanga. Inhale, reach forward into Cobra. Stretch, don't forget those buttocks. Press the arms deeply into the floor. Tuck your toes under and reach back into dog pose. Again, opening up the backs of the legs, allowing blood to rush back through those legs. Breathing. Okay, coming back down onto the knees. This time we're going to sit down onto the right side, moving the feet to the left. Right leg over. Right arm up. Turn to face your left knee into spinal twist. Make sure you pull the shoulder right in front of that left knee and squeeze to hold onto that right knee. If you're a little bit confused, remember to try the adaptive pose. Bringing the elbow up to the knee. And bringing the hand up as well. That's it. Opening up deeper. As Neil is here, this is the adaptive pose for those who find it really hard to stretch open the arm. And breathe into this, squeezing the internal organs. Opening up and stretching the spine right into the neck. Try to keep calm and breathe as deeply as you can. Inhaling and exhaling. Good, now as you release, all the way around to the other side, bringing the left arm in front of the left leg and squeezing. Lift right off of that left buttock and open deeper around the right shoulder, maintaining this stretch for at least one or two breaths, maybe more. Again, remind yourself that you can stop at any time, pausing the video to hold something longer if you wish. That's good. And begin to release. Okay, hands down, cross leg position, and then stretch your legs out, forward, head to knee. Feet together, toes together, flex your feet, lift out of your hips, hands over the top of the head. Inhaling, and exhaling as you reach forward. Now for those who find it impossible to hold onto their toes or feet or ankles, it's always worth getting your towel and placing it over the feet, here as John is. Then use the elbows to stretch to the side to pull yourself deeper. This is very good. Maintain constant flowing breath. Mental focus. And deep stretching. This is called the youthful pose. Agility is youth. So make sure that you do this at least every day after good vigorous practice. 
Keep your shoulders around it, pull the head up, pull the shoulder blades together and open up the chest. Very important for people with rounded shoulders. More advanced people, go into a deeper stretch. Good, palms together. Reach up, lift out of the hips. Placing the hands behind you for the inclined plane. Fingers away from the buttocks. Tighten the buttocks. Point the toes. And push up. That's really important the buttocks are tight. Think about the belly button being lifted towards the ceiling. Toes pointed. And breathe. Allow the head to travel as far back behind you. Unless, of course, you have neck problems, in which case you keep the head up. Inhale and raise right leg up and lower. Inhale, left leg up and lower. Inhale, push deeper and then lower gently to the floor. Good, just flex those feet. Bring the knees up and hug the knees. This will release the upper back and release the lower back. Now holding onto your toes, knees on the inside of your elbows, lift. Pull the elbows together, head looking up. If you're unable to hold onto your toes, hold onto the back of the legs like Pythor is. Remember this is about balance, and not strength need to come down come down whenever and wait for the rest of the class that's good bring the legs down still holding onto your toes open the knees out for side now if you need to put your feet down here but can't do it with your legs up that's fine rocking from side to side bring the bottom as close to the heels as you can the groin stretch push the knees down Remember to hold this for at least three breaths, inhaling. Now, holding onto the feet, thumbs on the inside, open up the soles of the feet like a book. This will give you a deeper stretch in the groin. Pulling forward, relax into a deeper stretch. Now, if you find this incredibly uncomfortable, stay sitting up, stretching the groin, and then a bit later on, move forward. Those more advanced can start to reach down for the feet. And even more flexible people reach in front of the feet. Keep focus on the breath. Relax the buttocks. And use the arms to pull you into a deeper stretch. Elbows pulling out to the side. Chest reaching down towards the floor. Every bit of it now and then, lift the head up. And then come down into a deeper stretch. Good. Now stretching the arms out, palms together. Come to sitting. And hands down. Okay, we're going to bring our knees up. Give ourselves a good squeeze. Head in towards the knees. Same thing this time, lying down, holding onto the toes and stretch the legs open. Now obviously we're all different as far as our flexibility goes, but stretch deeply into this, either holding onto your toes or putting the arms together and pulling the shoulders and head off the floor and maintain using the abdominals and breathing. Good, laying down, pull the knees together. And just rock from side to side to release the lower back, massaging it, either rolling backwards and forwards or using the knees in a stirring motion. Stretching the legs up to the ceiling now. Use the hands. Now release the hands. 
pulling the shoulders off the floor again using the abdominals and sustain breath now begin to slowly lower down towards the floor lowering the back first popping the hands underneath the buttocks and lowering the legs slowly slowly down towards the floor good holding onto the ankles tucking the knees in place the feet firmly on the floor now if you pull the shoulder blades together and stretch the arms out you can clasp your hands underneath the back or for those who are flexible enough hold on to the ankles from here we're going to try the full wheel placing the hands down on the floor fingers in towards the shoulders now obviously we can't all do this but if you manage to just lift the shoulders off the floor or place the hands in correct position you're working up to this level now you need to spend about four to five deep breaths in this position so again for more advanced students stop the tape and hold you can add at this point the shoulder stand but be warned those with high blood pressure or serious neck injuries must never do this settle in by pulling the shoulder blades together and then lowering down into the plough position depending on how advanced you are it will depend on how long you hold these postures again tape can go off and you can hold for longer lowering to the floor place one knee up left hand outer edge of right knee and into a lying twist stretching the spine good pull the knee in squeeze into the belly exhale chin to the knee and release to the floor and other side rotating this time to the right stretching the left arm away and breathe into the stretch make sure your toes tucked underneath pull the foot in chin to the knee and release to the floor I'm beginning to cool down now calm breath centered focused mind and into fish pose make sure the hands are pulled underneath the body pull the shoulder blades together elbows tucked underneath the ribs and stretch the hands out until they reach down far enough for you to sit on the wrists arch up leaving the lower back on the floor and the upper back off of the floor top of the head resting gently on the floor breathing deeply into the chest and release into savasana corpse pose final relaxation now you can either rest with the soles of the feet together knees open to the side or legs extended breathe into the belly exhale remember this is the most important part of your practice recovery time allowing the body to assimilate all the information that's been taken on board spend as long as you need in savasana and enjoy peace and relaxation You've worked really, really hard. Remember to look after yourself, keep warm, and drink plenty of water for the next two hours to help the body detox. Namaste.
Yeah, is that it? Is yeah. that it? Yeah, that's oh. good. Happy, happy. Yeah, happy, happy.